What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Steve Nasantoski here. Amazing Brew bringing you another episode of Freshman Feature for the class of 2021. This is the series where we talk about the school, stats, recruitment, projection, everything you need to know about every single member of the incoming 2021 Michigan football class. I had a poll on the community tab of YouTube here. I had a poll on Twitter, and you guys wanted to see Junior Colson. So that's who we're bringing in episode three here. Very happy to be covering this guy. He is one I expect to contribute early. But check out Twitter, the community tab for locations uh, in the future where to vote for who you want to see for the upcoming episodes. That's where I pull from to really get the ideas of who to cover next and who you guys want to see and subscribe while you're there. All right. Previous episodes linked in the playlist up above over here as well as below in the description. So check those out. We did Donovan Edwards last week, JJ McCarthy earlier this year. But let's dive into episode three here, Junior Colson. All right. For his high school out of Ravenwood High School out of Brentwood, Tennessee, Class 6A state runners up his junior year with a 13-2 and record. He was a wide receiver before converting over two linebackers. So that gives you a little bit of a skill set that he's bringing. He's kind of a jumbo wide receiver build converted into a linebacker. That's where his skills are better suited. Uh, he converted after his freshman year, I believe. Uh, also, he returns punts for his team as a linebacker. If that, again, gives you any sense of the athleticism he brings. Looking at his stats here. So 59 tackles, 7.5 tackles for loss, three and a half sacks, two fumble recoveries his senior year here. Junior year, crazy production, 175 tackles, 30 tackles for loss, and 14 sacks. So he did have a shorter year, senior year. But man, that junior year stat line is insane. 175 tackles, that's something you don't see every day. Okay, moving into his metrics, 4.7740, which is good for a 40, but honestly, he it seems like he plays a lot faster than that. And I do believe that 40 time is a little bit out of date. He also has a shuttle and a vertical. 4.33 is the shuttle, vertical is 34.00. So rem- So keep in mind that these metrics were from 2019 when he was 204 pounds. But even though he's a little bit bigger now, he's listed at 6'2", 230. Still seems like he's quite a bit uh, faster, more athletic than what he tested back in 2019. Apparently, he ran a 4.57 in June. I'll I'll link the Twitter video here. I'll show that in the background. And uh, that would be pretty crazy. So like a 6'3", 228-pound guy, that's what he weighed in at at the time of this video. So if that's anywhere accurate, that's pretty scary, right? So again... Just kind of adding layers here to his speed, the kind of scary athleticism he brings to linebacker. Looking at his rankings here, four-star to all services. You have rivals, the highest on him at 82 nationally, number five outside linebacker, three in Tennessee. Uh, ESPN, the least bullish on him, right? Still a four-star, but just within the top 150 nationally. 16 outside linebacker, number three, Tennessee. In 24-7, kind of keeps in the middle, right? Just around 100 overall nationally. Seven outside linebacker, and again, number three in the state of Tennessee. That brings his composite within the top 100 uh, and number five outside linebacker in the country. Looking at his offers. So maybe not like the top flight offer list, but he still has some pretty big hitters. Auburn, Arkansas, Baylor, FSU, LSU, Mississippi State, Oklahoma, Ole Miss, Oregon, South Carolina, Tennessee, a and USC, Virginia Tech, West Virginia. It's also always good for me to see uh, teams like Duke and Georgia Tech. That means the academics you know, are likely high to get offers from those schools. Not always the case, but again, it's just another thing to keep in mind. And then he has a fair number of offers from the Big Ten as well. Uh, Indiana, Maryland, Michigan State, Nebraska, Penn State, Purdue, and Wisconsin. So that's a pretty lengthy offer list for a guy out of Tennessee here. You know, maybe not that top level, but still really, really good for uh, a high four-star, which he is. So it was a recruitment. He caught a lot of attention during his 2019 spring season. Right, upside was uh, the upside was there after his switch from wide receiver to linebacker. It was just about him learning the position. He camped at Michigan in June of 2019 while he was kind of getting uh, picked up. You know, his, his attention was growing at that point, and he earned a call, earned an offer. Excuse me, after that camp at Michigan, rivals then invited him to their five star challenge. Uh, he really impressed there. Tons of good reports out of that. And then uh, a number of unofficial visits throughout 2019, uh, a couple to Tennessee as well. And uh, he committed on uh, about a year later in May uh, of 2020. So his finalists were LSU, Ole Miss, Oregon, and Tennessee. Uh, teams like Oklahoma and Ole Miss were, were pushing pretty hard as well. Um, Miami, another team that was pushing, but uh, Michigan held on to his commitment. And here we are today. He's an early enrollee. 
So looking at his skill set, right? I've been playing the film in the background, but what kind of skills does he bring, right? So I mentioned former wide receiver. So he has good ball skills. Uh, he has loose hips, natural in coverage. He's a guy that more often than not, you're going to see the, the scouts laud his ability in coverage in space. Uh, he's seen more as a nickel linebacker. Uh, and he's, he's a sure tackler. I didn't see, you know, he wasn't like exploding through guys. He wasn't getting that level of pop, but he wraps up well. It wasn't just he was throwing his shoulder around. He wrapped up well. He's a, he was a very solid tackler. And he, he's overall better as an uncovered run and chase guy. His pass rush ability as a blitzer especially is very solid. So we'll need to develop kind of the stack and shed, right? If he's going to be in the box, going to need to de- to engage that ability to take on blockers he did show good patience took good angles when he was playing inside and had to track a ball from the backfield but it's just something that he's going to have to develop uh if he wants to move inside but he he has long arms a great build overall and he's something that can really shine as a hybrid outside linebacker if that's the direction that michigan wants to take with him Um, but again with the right development potential move inside could be a good move as well. So for his film, again, I'm doing a live stream tonight, Monday uh, at 8.30 p.m. So check that out. I'll go over all the film from Huddle, Twitter, everything, and we can go live on that tonight. Okay, so for his comp, this one's tough. There's there's no real guy you could find on Michigan's roster that really kind of fit the profile. You could kind of say Josh Uche, but like a smaller version, right? Long arms, a guy kind of between positions. Colson was significantly or is significantly higher rated at this point than Josh Uche was out of high school. And obviously Uche turned into quite the pass rush specialist, but Uche at the next level at NFL is an outside linebacker. Uh, I don't think Colson quite ha- has that level of athleticism, but I do think he can be that type of lengthy linebacker pass rush specialist that we saw of Uche. It's actually Jaden Hood, a guy I covered last year, or I'm sorry, he- he's a fellow linebacker in this class, so I'll cover him later this year, but they both have very similar profiles as Uh, kind of a lengthy in-between position linebacker who brings a high level of athleticism with size. Uh, So Jaden Hood, if you go and watch his film ahead of my next episode, whenever I cover him, that's another guy that kind of fills the same profile of Junior Colson. Okay, so projection, right? He's an early enrollee. So the thing I always think about when I watch Junior Colson's film, remember how Jabril, Jabril Peppers was kind of out of place in his role against teams like Wisconsin, right? Teams that really run heavy, have to take on a lot of blocks. I think Colson is the exact kind of person you need in those games. Someone that can uh, line up against tight ends and pass coverage really well, take on blocks, but still has the sideline to sideline speed as kind of that outside linebacker hybrid position to really hack it. And that's exactly what he is. He's kind of like a jumbo uh, Klee Hudson or a jumbo Jabril Peppers in that regard. Good reports from the spring thus far, right? Remember, I made a video about how context is everything, but it's still good to hear his name crop up this early. Linebacker overall, one of the youngest positions on this team. So I expect him to get some run probably first in some pass rush specialties, third downs where you can utilize his ability in space, his coverage ability to drop into his own and also be able to send him on a blitz occasionally. So Exactly where will he stay there? Will they try to move him inside? The move inside will take more time. So I think this year you'll see him primarily on the outside, make life easier for him as he's ramping up with his knowledge, utilize the skills he already has, and then see later on where he moves. But he seems college ready already. His body's there. Strength seems to be there. I'm excited to see his projection and it'll just be a wait and see on whether he moves inside or continues to be kind of that hybrid role. So that's it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you, where do you think he'll be used in 2021? And yeah, I want I want to hear your thoughts. But check out again the community tab uh, for who you want to cover, want me to cover on the upcoming episode. Also, I have a poll on Twitter, so check that out. Again, live stream tonight. We'll talk all things Junior Colson. Go through his film. Any questions you have, anything like that. And finally, as always, like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps grow the channel. Okay, beyond that, guys, thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Stay safe out there. And as always, go blue.